way back in 2008, Judge Morrow in the U.S. District Court in Molina versus Lexmark did a pretty good uh, paragraph on the distinction between the two, stating that confidentiality refers to the parties voluntarily agreeing to limit the disclosure of the information. It's a voluntary agreement, whereas a privilege is the ability of third parties to prevent others from disclosing. And so you can have one without the other. So before we get to the rules of, prof of professional responsibility, as I said, they were um, adopted by the California Supreme Court last May to be effective November 1st. And they are the first comprehensive review in 30 years. And our, under our old rules, they were merely more aspirational and were vague. And so the marching orders of the commission uh, to revise the rules wanted to update them so that they would address changes in the law, eliminate unnecessary differences between California rules and the other 49 states, because as you know, we were the only state that did not adopt or use the model rules up until last November. And they wanted to make them clear and enforceable as opposed to uncertain and, and, and ambiguous. The important thing with the model rules is that they cover every aspect of our behavior. You do not need to be practicing law to violate these rules and to be disciplined. There was a article that I came upon from February of 2013 uh, talking about New York lawyers, and New York has used the model rules for years. Um, explaining some New York lawyers have been disciplined for behavior having nothing to do with their practice of law. For example, uh, one falsely accused a state trooper uh, of having uttered anti-Semitic slurs against him and reaffirming it on more than one occasion in order to avoid a speeding ticket. Another willfully refused to, uh, and violated court orders in terms of paying child support. Um, a, a, another one refused, another one was a fixatious litigant in their own right. And then the one I liked the most is there was a lawyer by the name of Charla uh, Bookman Bickman, who was on a joint bank account with her sister, and her sister, and it was a rent-controlled apartment in New York City. Her sister passed away. She moved in, unbeknownst to the landlord, and continued to use the checks from the joint bank account, I guess forging her sister's name, uh, and lived in the rent-free, rent-control apartment for two years. And the landlord finally picked up on it about two years later and moved to evict her. The State Bar of New York sought to discipline her, and she said, well, wait a minute, what I'm doing has nothing to do with the, with the practice of law, and I have done nothing wrong. And the State Bar said, wrong, you're suspended for 18 months for, you know, for, for doing that. So these rules um, do affect every aspect of our life, and I, and I want to make that clear. Now, the new rules are redundant uh, to a large extent to both the evidence code sections and to the um, business and professions code. And I will point that out as we go along. Um, the first one is Rule 1.6 that talks about the attorney-client relationship and says, as you can read, a lawyer shall not reveal information uh, protected from disclosure unless the client has informed consent. Informed consent is now a defined term, and what it means is that the a, a person's agreement to a proposed course of conduct after the lawyer has communicated and explained the relevant circumstances and the material risks include, including any actual and reasonable foreseeable adverse consequences. So now we have to get the informed consent, and it's a defined term, informed written consent, means that it has to be in writing, obviously. Uh, there is an exception in B, and it says that a lawyer may but is not required to reveal information to the extent that the lawyer feels it is necessary to prevent a criminal act 
likely to result in death or substantial, substantial bodily harm. Part C and D and E go on to explain that if a lawyer uh, believes that she must do that, what she must first do is talk to the client and see if she can talk the client out of engaging in the criminal conduct. If she can't, then she has to advise the client that she's going to inform the authorities on the client. And then if she does decide to inform the authorities to say as little as possible to preserve as much of the privilege as she can. And the rule goes on to say that the lawyer who does decide to reveal information, it will not be deemed a violation of the rules. Uh, this rule is redundant of evidence code section 956.5, which says again that there's no privilege if the lawyer reasonably believes that the disclosure of confidential inf information is necessary to prevent a criminal act that may result either in death or substantial bodily harm. So the next rule, evidence code 952, is our basic attorney. Yes, Glenn. I'm curious about that because my knowledge that I thought was that you could reveal confidential information to prevent any criminal act. And of course, that obviously is not. I'm going to get there. Oh, all right. Very good. I'll shut up. Uh, you can reveal. OK. Basic. No, so you have the basic attorney-client privilege in 952. It's information transmitted between an attorney and a client in the course of a relationship in confidence, not in the presence of third persons unless their presence is necessary um, to, pro to provide legal opinions and or legal advice. And then you have all the exceptions. Uh, 956 paragraph A is the crime fraud exception that Glenn was just uh, mentioning, saying that there is no attorney-client privilege if the services of the lawyer are sought or obtained to enable someone to, to aid uh, to commit or plan to commit a crime or a fraud, or if the lawyer believes that disclosure is reasonably necessary to prevent a criminal act that the lawyer thinks will result in death or substantial bodily harm. Uh, so that, I guess, Glenn is what you are referencing, 956A. B, uh, with the adoption of whichever proposition it was allowing um, the use of cannabis in California on a recreational basis, B creates a privilege that a lawyer can discuss cannabis with the client and still maintain the attorney-client privilege, uh, even though it is volative of federal law. Under state law, you, it will still be deemed attorney-client if you have clients in the cannabis business. Uh, 956.5, I just went over about the disclosure of a criminal act. 957, as you know, evidence code 957, as you know, if your client passes away, so, so too does the privilege. There is no attorney-client privilege once someone with a decedent 